shows it in the growth we've had and the unity and harmony we enjoy in this congregation. So with that speech, keep them in your prayers. Should be a short meeting, right? Okay, good. Then uh, Colander will be chairing it. Our chairman is out of town today, so he's kind of brought out of retirement for us today. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, I mentioned in church uh, after the late early service, I, my adult class just began last week. Uh, we do have a mixture of non-members and members there, which is always kind of nice. Uh, if you are interested in a particular topic, you're always welcome to join us. Um, I try to list those in the bulletin each week so you know what we're talking about with from week to week. So you don't have to obligate yourself necessarily to every week. I'd like to begin with an opening collect and prayer. And I lost my little pastoral care companion book, which has all the collects and prayers of the week. That's what happens when you hit a certain age. You start laying things down, and you never know where you put it the rest of your life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow Murphy's Law, which always works. I will buy a new one. <laughs> After it comes in the mail, I will write my name in it. And then, there you go. It will show up. So I'll write my name in light pencil. Maybe that will trick Murphy. We'll see. To give the opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And you. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and always hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Genesis 37. This is a segment that takes the last several chapters of the book of Genesis through chapter 50 or 51. I forget how many exact there are, 51, I think. Uh, and it's a big, the major part, really, of the book of Genesis, the story of Joseph. And as I mentioned last week to introduce this, the promise is the thing. The promise is the thing. And the whole book of Genesis focuses on the promise. And it's almost, Luther makes his point, as though God is playing a game with the devil. As he starts out by promising that through the woman, the promised head crusher will come, who will smash the devil's head and bring back life to humanity. So the devil has to now be worried about all women who get pregnant. Then it narrows down, of course, into Noah's family, 
find it to Shem, or to Abraham, or to Shem, and then find it to Abraham. Then it goes down. You keep moving through Genesis as you wonder who will it be as it narrows more and more. Now, at the end of the book of Genesis, we're wondering as this thing starts to wind down, who will it be? Which of the sons? How many were there of Jacob? Twelve sons. Which of the sons will it be? Uh, we should have learned by now it probably won't be the eldest. Cain, we learned that already in the Garden of, oh, the Garden of, the the Garden of Eden. Didn't it? it wasn't the eldest, Cain. He turns out to be a murderer of his brother. And you know, as you work through the Bible, God always seems to select the youngest, the most unlikely person. And the Joseph story shows us that. Who was the oldest son? Reuben. Reuben, the oldest son. That was what his name, Reuben. Son is here. See, I got a son. Uh, the excitement again as, uh, uh, I believe that's Leah's son, isn't it? Leah gives birth to her firstborn, to Jacob's firstborn son, and he shouts excitedly, I got a son. This may be the one. Well, that we had such excitement and enthusiasm for the second coming of the Messiah on the last day. Uh, we will get to it in a few weeks, the prayer of Jacob before he dies, in which he blesses all his sons. And right in the middle of the prayer, he says, Oh, that your salvation would come, O Lord. And you see, you get this feeling, this urgency, this plea that God would keep his promise and deliver his people. And that is the prayer of the church. As we pray, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Unfortunately, if I might digress a moment, we live in a culture and society where we are too easily distracted. And we get wrapped up in unimportant trivialities. And we start to get depressed and worried about these things. And I'm the worst one in a whole bunch, probably. I uh, just upgraded my, uh, my PDA last week because it died. Some of you don't know what that is. That's my personal digit, whatever, visual assistant, <laughs> whatever you call it. Thing. The battery died. I upgraded to a different, uh, different uh, whatchamacallit, uh, device. And now I'm lost, hopelessly lost. My life is becoming unraveled. I asked my wife about that. Uh, but we get all wrapped up in these things and lose our enthusiasm what really matters, and that is the coming of the kingdom of God. But we can learn something from these people here. Uh, will Reuben be the one? We should know by now. Probably not, although as we read this section in Genesis, we start to think maybe Reuben will be the one. He is the oldest. And it starts out with he's the one who tries to rescue his young brother, Joseph. So we think, well, he's a good candidate. It will turn out that he's not the one. As you know, you know the story already. It's too bad we can't read these stories kind of in abstraction or from step outside what we know. Then the surprise factor might be there. So let's look at Genesis 37. We just began this last week. Uh, where um, Jacob has this second to youngest son, and his name, may he give me another one. Yosef, from the Hebrew word asaf, which means add. And so Yosef means add another one to me, which God, of course, answers that prayer eventually. Who was uh, Jake, uh, uh, Joseph's mother? Rachel. 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 She was barren for many years, could not give birth to a son or any child, which was a big curse in those days. Not just that she wouldn't be a mother, but more theologically, she would not be able to participate in the whole coming of the Messiah. Okay? When she finally gets pregnant and has this boy, you'll say, they add another one. God hears her prayer and gives her another son. What will his name be? Son of my right hand. I mentioned that last week that as she is in childbirth, she dies. She cries out his name, ben Uni, which means son of my affliction and my depression. And Jacob changes the name to ben Yamin, son of my right hand, which meant the powerful one, you see, my strength and so on. Uh, so Joseph here is the son here. He is uh, loved by his father uh, more than all the other sons. In verse 2, it says he brought their evil report of his brothers to their father. And as you read this chapter, you notice that his brothers were a bunch of rats. And you wonder how in heaven's name God could ever have had his promise come to pass for a family like this. As they bicker, they argue, they fight. Uh, it's a good thing we're not like that anymore, I'll tell you that. 